across the uh, Bay of Bengal. So, people preferred to alight and touch Kerala. And another thing, the ships which come to um, Malayan ports gather at the Kedar to wait for the favorable monsoon, favorable wind. So it was a gathering place of uh, ships of uh, almost all the traders who want to cross the Bay of Bengal. So in that way, the trade of Kedar was an important one in the west coast of uh, the Malakum Peninsula. The trade in such a way, the trade in Malacca in Kedar developed very much. By that time, the Dutch and the English were competing with each other and the Coromandel and the Dutch were positioned in Nagapattanam and the English were at Kadalu and they realized the importance of this Kedar trade and the Nagapattanam, the Dutch Guber in Nagapattanam invested a huge sum in textile trade and they purchased a textile so far export to Southeast Asian countries particularly to Kedar port and in that the Muslim traders played an important role. The return jet, the ships from Kedar carried a large number of elephants to Coromandel coast. The Muslims were pioneering ele elephant trade and the elephants were available in large numbers it was, the price was also cheap and, um, but it was sold at a very high price, price at Parmander Post where the rulers were crazy of uh, creating such a uh, force in their uh, army, elephant force in the army. So, it was um, sold for very good profit in, on the Parmander Post. So we find very good uh, references about this in the writings of the both the Dutch and the English history of the records. And the further the Sultan of Keda was say, periodically sending his ships to Parmandal coast and one ship which was uh, sent in 1749 for instance, I am telling some instances. In 1749, it was uh, um, uh, under the command of one Naguda Raza, who was a Julia Muslim. Another ship in 1758, it was uh, commanded by Inayat Muhammad Marikan, Pacha Sheikh Ismail Periyatambi, and these people were also Julia Muslims who were domiciled in Keta area. Further, the Sultan had requested the government of the East India government at Chennai, at, at Madras, to extend all support. Besides, the Julia Muslims were also helping him for the procurement of the commodities. And the Sultan also had written a letter to the uh, very big trader who he called Lingi Chetty, who was stationed at Madras. He's a very big trader. Uh, he's a Telugu Chetty. He was, had written to him that to extend all help for the purchase of commodities to the ships. So this shows the uh, type of uh, trade, the method of trade and also the cordial relationship between East India Company and the Sultan of Kedar during that time. Then in 1750s and 1770s uh, to this period the shipping of Nagapattinam shows a uh, very good record of uh, shipping to Southeast Asian. 
ports, particularly to Keda port. The ships from Madras, Kadalur, Port Nova, Nagu, Nagapattinam, and other places, six to eight ships travel from uh, um, took their voyage from the Parvandal coast to the ports of uh, Malacca and Keda. The port of Nauru actually emerged as an important port in the Paramandal region and uh, the Muslim traders laid their ship from that port mostly we find from the Tanjau uh, district records. As usual, during this period also, textiles constitute the major export. In return, they go with the powder sugar, china sugar, copper, betel nut, resin bags, sandalwood, ivory, timber of different description which were used in construction works. And the ships which the ship which touched a chain took the ponies there and they were also exported to the Southeast and from the Southeast coast to the Paramandal coast, which were in high demand. So so the by that time the Coming of uh, Arab forces was almost uh, nil. So this horse trade was an attraction to the traders. So they got uh, very good uh, profit over this. In this also, the Muslim traders were very keen. So from Nahu, they produced various types of cloths in Nagur. Nagur and Nagur area, they were very good type of uh, weavers, good painters and uh, dyers. All these uh, made this uh, uh, Nagapatna visits a uh, port of value and uh, these uh, manufacturing good also brought a good uh, image of this uh, Nagur cloth. In that, in one cloth, which is called Naguri blue cloth. A blue cloth manufactured at Nagur had a very good market in Southeast Asian market and as well as in the European market. So, such cloth that uh, exported from um, Nagur port to various ports through Southeast the concentration of Muslims in Keda in the third quarter of 17th century was much. There were a large number of Tamil Muslims settled in Keda area. And um, in fact, the English representative Wang Tang, while writing to the his headquarters at Fort St. George, Madras in 1772 says the Chudia Muslims were dominant merchants in the coast. They were influential in the court, in the royal court. The Sultan was reluctant to enter into any trade contact with English to the detriment of Chudia Muslims. He also added that the elephant trade from Keda was very popular and attractive in which the Muslims traders are involved and they get a very good profit from them. And another report of 1789 portrays the strong settlement of Muslims in the Keda area, Keda port and as well as in the inland. And the Chudias had indeed risen to a position of influence and power in the state of Keda. There were harbour masters and uh, royal merchants. In 1770s, one Chudia Muslim by name Jamal, by name, most probably he, is, uh, he must be a native of Nagapatam, 
was the most influential minister in the state and he was conferred with the title of Dhatusri Raja. In this capacity, he handled the negotiation with, the, with Francis Light over British settlement in the state of Kedam. So, such was the influence of the Tamil Muslims in Keda state. The Sultan of Keda, Abdullah Mukaram Shah, ceded the island of Penang to the English in the year 1786 in return of defense assistance to the, from the English to get protection from the attack of the neighboring countries. Captain Francis Light in August 1786 hoisted the Union Jack and inaugurated the uh, English administration in the island of Panam and renamed it as the Prince of Wales Island. Penang was the natural harbour good, with good anchorage. It was a free port. Further, the commodities from various corners of South India were able to come over there and from there it has become an, from there the commodities went to world market. Loaded so from various corners came there and the ships from various corners came there and they purchased the things and it was al almost it became a world trading center for the Southeast Asian area and as well as to the, the eastern to the western market to the western market to the eastern goods uh, transferred through to this uh, was a transport that So among the early inhabitants of the Penang, Muslims were in large numbers. The earliest census of Penang shows that the Muslims were the third largest population in the Penang island. The ships which were coming from Coromandel uh, coast brought about uh, 2,000 people every year. Um, the people were coming and leaving like that the process was uh, immigration and leaving and all those things were going on. So, like this, the Chulia Muslims thought that Penang is a place with a future to them. So, a large number of Muslims came to Penang and began to settle. The shipping records of the earlier, that is the, the earlier settlers, were very settled in a very grand manner and they were uh, living in some uh, very good affluent resident places in the Georgia. The English records speak much about <coughs> so, in the shipping records, <coughs> during the last quarter of 18th century, the shipping records, we get very good record over the, in this period from uh, for 1788 to uh, 1795 in which an average about 10 to 15 ships sail from Coromandel coast, particularly Nagapatanam, Mahavu, Kotrumavu, uh, Adalu and other places. And a majority of them are found to be the Chulia streams. And a large number of Chulia Muslims also are coming to the sports of Tanam, Another thing, the Julia merchants took advantage of all the um, protection in the, offered by the Penang Court, but at the same time, same time, they did not forget the old connection with the Kedar and other groups. So, creation of Penang was in no way hindrance to the trade of 
other places at least for some years. So, we, in fact, the Karamdal Muslims uh, were liking to go to Kedapur for trade and the trade was uh, continuing. But in the long run, the English free merchants were trading in large numbers with a higher capital along with the Muslim traders. Even in this period, cloth textiles were important commodity of export from government post. Particularly even now, the Naguri blue cloth was having a very good market. As usual, the things manufactured and as well as the things which were available here were taken to permanent post in the institutions. See, the English were ambivalent to the governmental Muslim traders and their trade and their other trading activities. In fact, they were encouraging the governmental Muslims to continue their trade. They were extending so many concessions to them and they took up the uh, repair of the ports of uh, Nagur and Nagapattanam and um, they employed the Muslim uh, crews in their ships. The, they thought that the migration of the Julia Muslims to Penang will strengthen, strengthen its economic uh, stability. It, it, it will strengthen the economic uh, position. So, they encouraged the immigration of the Julia Muslims to Penang. With all these things, on the other hand, they thought that the Tamil Muslims are the competitors for the Southeast Asian trade. They felt some of the adverse effects of the Julia Muslim. Only the adverse effect, the, the positive uh, side they have forgotten. The English further thought that the Julias were responsible and instrumental in denial, denial of concessions to the English trade by sultans of various states in the Malay Peninsula. In Keda, they held the Julia ministers, Julia minister Jamal, responsible evil genius for the failure of English representative forests impressed name forest mission to secure permission to settle at Kulu Keda. That is, they wanted to make a settlement there at Kulu Keda. It was not granted by the Sultan. So, the uh, English thought that because of the influence of uh, the Kulia minister Jamal, it was uh, denied to them. Further, the English reports of talks very disparaging about uh, the Julia minister Jamal over this issue about his birth and uh, trade activities and all other activities as a cunning fellow like this. See, uh, very interesting reading also that is. Uh, so, the East India Company is such a powerful uh, force, both politically, economically, technically. They considered this small group of people as their prime enemy in the trade of the Southeast Asia. So they started uh, giving trouble to the Muslim traders. They wanted to the impose some economic blockade. The long run, Julia, in the long run, such uh, yes, economic blockades proved fatal to the uh, Muslim trade. And in the long run, their um, ships were uh, reduced in sailing and they had to follow 
so many economic measures for the in their trading activities in that if a ship sails to uh, Penang from Nagapattinam, they themselves did all the works, say loading, unloading, repairing the ships, maintaining the ships, so all these works without any difference between the traders, the merchants, exporters, ship owner, crews and the like. So all did all work. So because of this, the uh, cost of running cost was minimized. And even after all these things, the uh, profit margin was very less. The, from the beginning of the 19th century, the Julia merchants of Porto Nova, Kadalo, Nagapattanam, Nagur and Karakal, Trankubar continued their trade port in Southeast Asian area, East Asia, including the port of Penang and Ketam. These ships sailed with the uh, English flags. So by up to that there was no any trouble. But as you know, uh, there was war between the European nations which had interest in the Indi Indian Ocean trade. So the ships with the flag of um, one nation was caught by the other. As the, the, even that ships was uh, private traders ships were also considered the enemy ships. So in that way, the so many ships of the Muslims were caught by the French private. During the situation, the Trankubar, the Danish people at the Trankubar, they came to the rescue of the Muslim people. They afforded them their flags and colors. So, with the help of the Danes, the Muslim traders were continuing their uh, trade since the Danish process was honored because the Danes were neutral in the war. In the long run, the Danes also proved they withdrew from the neutrality and the ships which sailed to Southeast Asian countries with the passes of uh, the Danish um, passes were in danger. So many of the ships of the Muslims, traders of Nagapattanam, Nagu, Karekal, Rankubar, Kotranovo, Kadalu and all these ships were uh, confiscated by the both English and the French people and the many such ships were uh, their goods were forfeited and all this. In those troubled, troubled situation, the traders, ship owners of uh, uh, these places, Nago, Nagapattanam, Karekal, Kotunovo, Kadalur and other places approached the English administration and uh, they have uh, asked for their help to release their uh, ships. However, uh, with the, at least uh, after the loss of some materials, they were able to retrieve the uh, ships and all that. So, in, in these records, that is about uh, from 1820 to 1835 or during this period, we find a very good record of shipping for Paramandal Coast where the names of the ships, the owner, the crew, the commander, the Naguda, the commodities freighted, the tonnage of the ships, the place of origin and the place of arrival and all those details are found. A very good record for that period. This is the, in fact, the a very good record that we see, we see in the uh, European English records about the Muslim trade and uh, uh, from this we come to understand the number of ships that they played to Nala, from Nalapattanam to South Asian countries and the commodity composition and all these details we uh, gather. So the shipping enterprises, so in the long run, the shipping enter enterprises of the uh, Tamil Muslims was not appreciable in the second quarter of uh, 19th century. However, the Chulia merchants continued their trade though the number of vessels and the commodity freight trade was different and less. We find only lesser number of Muslim owned ships. Vessels were also 
very small. That is, previously it was uh, the ships with tonnage of 400 to 500 tons. Now we find the ships with uh, tonnage of 100 and below 100. So provisions, those are commodities. So now textiles has gone. Now the commodities freighted from Coromandel Coast to provisions, fresh vegetables, cattle, so sheep, um, um, goats, the skin and the hides, and all these things, uh, dry fish, 